Honest answer or you want the PR answer? The honest answer. Ugh. <laughs> it's a bit loom and, and, and gloom. I'll give the okay. I'll give something more tactful. Um, you, you, whatever comes out of your heart is fine. <laughs> oh jeez. Okay. So over the past few days, um, we have essentially heard from various world leaders, um, philanthropists, and even um, business leaders and global leaders themselves uh, that we essentially, I don't know if you heard um, from about the, about the statement that the, the president made um, for COP. Um, he has essentially stated that the science isn't really out for, for us, you know, needing to deviate from fossil fuels, wow. which is pretty much like a stab in the back for our whole reason for even being here. Sure. And later, later beyond that, like later, I think it was either today or yesterday, Bill Gates essentially said that we should be okay at three degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, what's the reason for us even being here in the first place? It's very difficult when you look at the extreme weather events that are occurring everywhere. In Southern Africa, we had a heat wave very recently. Mozambique faced a, a, um, extreme events and, uh, the, and is paying the price of climate change. So it's diff difficult to be hopeful when you see all of the stories, all of the gas pipelines that are being built when you realize that every year we come to COP talk about the same issues we go back home and we don't see any progress sometimes it can be a bit dark I think that hope is not a luxury that I cannot I can afford not to have and unfortunately this is the world that we're living in today we have to suffer the consequences here at COP it's been one of our warmest winters we're feeling the effects We've had discussions in terms of how cross-cutting issues from public health to access to medicines and geopolitical conflicts are really rising. Having young voices at the table at COP28 is really important because if you're not on the table, you're on the menu. We are the ones that uh, will have to live with the consequences of our climate actions. The actions that are being taken right now are going to have drastic consequences. Young people make up a majority of the population in many countries of the world now and have been working as change makers for such a long time. But sadly, we are often tokenized and not really taken seriously. Uh, in my country, what we really need is uh, to be recognized as the hope bearer. And I also know that in this world, we should recognize young people as hope bearer. For citizens like myself who are from the global south, but more importantly from a small island developing state, we don't have the privilege of walking away. Me being here is a testament for my resilience and to let others know, especially the decision makers, that we are here to stay and that we should especially care about those that will essentially not have a home in the next few decades as well. You guys are gonna die in 20 years. We're not. I'm young, so I'm gonna be living for like another 50, 60 years. What are we gonna do? That's why we have to voice out. When, when time is tough, it's on us, it's not on you guys, it's on our generation. Over half of the world's population are under the age of 30, so it's imperative to involve us. No conversations about us without us. youth population in the world is the most affected by the effects of climate change. So the voice of young people is not just a voice for the future, it's a voice for the present, but it's also a voice for solutions, for innovative solutions. I think you have the power to change the way many people think about issues, and you also have the capacity to identify and build the right technologies the world needs. So I see a, a youth population in the world that with the right empowerment can be the driver of the change we all require today. We have had positive advancement. 
there are not enough yet. But then we need to keep moving into the right direction. We need to keep thriving. We need to keep struggling. Because life is about that. Life is about fighting. And fighting for the right cause. And this is the right cause for humanity. I'm not sure I like the word leadership because it sort of implies there's some people who can do something and some people who are sort of just following and not, are not able to make that difference. You know, each and every one of us have our role to play in a different way. In addition to that, I, I would add two uh, distinctive, three distinctive um, qualities. One, talk to mobilize young people. I don't think I need to elaborate on that. Young people are the best investment that can be done. They're going to be around for more than, than other people and they are being just um, unfairly treated by their destiny so far. I remember coming to my first COPS. I was very young and I'm still idealistic, but back then I didn't have a lot of sense of how things worked. So at first it was very disappointing coming to COPS and hearing people say that they, the, the ambition wasn't high enough and that we weren't doing enough. So as a young person back then, I just wanted to do more. Ten years ago, we just we were youth activists here trying to see what was going on and trying to make people pay attention to a very urgent problem. And I feel like nowadays our voices are also more heard. And that really just makes all the difference. Instead of just being a youth activist on the sidelines, we're really talking face to face with world leaders, with decision makers, and really understanding that we too are the experts, right? We're not only the young people learning from the experts, but we can contribute with our ideas and speak as an expert and not only as a youth leader in this space. I'm seeing my own younger brothers and sisters really passionate about climate change, really pushing for this agenda and this discussion. And I'm pretty sure that because of them, as they reach the decision-making table, things will be completely different than how we do business now. What would it take for you to be considered a good ancestor? That's it. At the moment, I am working on really empowering women and girls and educating them, specifically when it comes to learning climate resilience skills like swimming, like uh, hiking, and really making sure that you have all the basic survival necessities that you need, that we tend to kind of forget that we need the whole of society to actually have if we kind of are going to get more and more climate change impacts. I'm tackling climate change as a future physician. In five months, I'll become a medical doctor. And for me, when I go back to my indigenous community, I know that I'm going to be seeing the health impacts, the downstream health impacts of climate change, the rising heat that puts pregnant indigenous women at higher risk of having a miscarriage, for instance. All of the health impacts of having unsanitary water, not having access to clean water, uh, which you know can create a plethora of health problems. As an indigenous physician, I'm also going to be advocating for solutions. What I really focus on is making sure that companies can perform and that they can be held accountable for the progress that they are having. With that in mind? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm... Hmm. What was the question again? <laughs> uh, if you think there is reason for hope in the fight against climate change, and, and you can be honest about what you feel. Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, there is reason for hope in this climate change fight if we are consistent and aggressive in our action for change. When commitments are made, and when deadlines are set, we need to stick to them. If we keep backtracking, moving the goalposts, depending on convenience or you not being convenient with a particular commitment or policy you've made, that will actually have lasting sustainability impacts on the globe for whatever reason. I think it's something that will just make us come here every year with little or no tangible outcome to show when we go back to our countries. I think that sometimes when you work too much with climate change, you, you get a little bit depressed, you get a little bit sad because the data is not that good. Coming here gave me a lot of reasons to hope for the future because I know that there are, there are a lot of good people working towards a better future, working against climate change. Look at the changes that are happening rapidly with respect to our climate and figure out 
young self what you can do today, tomorrow, next week, and next year to contribute incrementally to making the world a better place so that we can all live, survive, and thrive for generations to come. The hope I have is me standing here right now, uh, you being there behind the camera as well. We have so many young people that are present at COP28 this year. All of us here can do something individually. I want you all to challenge each of us. So tell us what you want us to go back home and do.